Hello. It's my pleasure to be invited to Canada's Open Data Summit today. What a fantastic way to see how Canadian governments, companies, and organizations are sharing data and maximizing its use. Open data will surely be a pillar in Canada's post-pandemic economic and social recovery. In this video, we'll share a little bit about what's happening in the world of geospatial data, and in particular, how we're working to make it easier to discover open data from multiple levels of government. My name is Janice Sharp, the Senior Director of the Federal Geospatial Platform for Canada. Some of you may know my organization, and some of you may not. I'm responsible for working with all of Canada's federal departments and agencies to voluntarily publish open geospatial data, and to share that on our open government website through a simple discovery site called Open Maps. All federal data open, available online through a single window. We've been doing this for about six years and incredibly, we've been able to continue to uh, our work for the past 18 months while working from home, no small task. So let's talk about how we got into this business of data sharing. Back in 2013, federal organizations got together to establish a common data sharing platform for geospatial information. At that time, expected outcomes driving this work were big. Data is the key to decision making. And if we could bring data to our decision makers, we expected they would make more informed and perhaps better decisions. We expected that bringing data to the public that would foster innovation, driving economic benefits, and certainly from a federal perspective, increase productivity. And we expected to improve federal efficiency, not only around lowering effort required to find and access and use data, but also by building one infrastructure available to all organizations, and so an enterprise approach. And all of this was expected to be done with no new investment, meaning departments and agencies had to reach into their pockets Pockets, put resources on the table and make this happen. And they did. We launched about five years ago and we collaborated with our open government colleagues to launch our publicly public discovery presence called Open Maps just a year later. But before we get into what exists around data sharing in Canada, let's quickly touch on some of the things that are happening around us that are shaping how we share data. There is more and more data being generated every day, more than we can at times manage. Technology is changing very quickly and mobilizing federal, provincial, territorial, and businesses to embrace that change and uh, be able to transform their operations happens at widely varying paces. Sometimes because of our many rules around security and accountability and transparency to our taxpayers, governments are challenged to transform quickly and adopt new technologies as quickly as private organizations can. And everyone wants data for free. This is what they expect today. At the same time, things like open government are promoting more open data sharing. International organizations are working actively together to share data more than just within their own countries, but internationally adopting standards to ensure this is practical and possible. And woven within these trends are citizens' ever-growing concerns for privacy as their data and the data they use become more and more available out there. In 2018, the Government of Canada consulted broadly for several months to have a look at issues, challenges, and opportunities that, the, that its data and use of its data presents. This culminated into a data strategy roadmap for the Government of Canada. It lays out a number of recommendations to the Clerk of the Privy Council Office. Um, and these recommendations were then turned to departments to address both collectively and individually through their own data strategies. On top of this, Canada is a signatory of the International Open Data Charter and an active member of the Open Government Partnership. And of course, the federal government has its own open government portal where citizens can find all publicly available open data, science, geospatial information. And this is supplemented by a series of open government directives and policies. And in parallel, each province and territory has its own open government suite of policies, directives, and portals. Speaking of geospatial data, which which, by the way, is essential data that can be tied to a location or viewed on a map. In Canada, we have the Geomatics Accord, which lays out an agreement between most provinces and territories to share their geospatial information with each other. And this accord has been in place for almost two decades. There are literally hundreds of uh, websites out there. A quick Googling of the internet reveals that there are many, many sources of open data from private industry to non-government organizations, provinces, and territories, crowdsourced information, municipal or city data. 
But for us, our open government is uh, the cornerstone of what we do. We see ourselves uh, at the Federal Geospatial Platform as the geospatial spokespeople for liberating data and information, increasing transparency, and enabling citizens to have full access to information that is really paid for by them. And the value proposition of this has been widely recognized and the Government of Canada's data strategy brought to the surface the need to keep going, to keep investing in open data as an enterprise asset. So this slide is an example of what you might reveal, say, if you were to search for water as a subject of interest in the open government site. You will find about 660 records, which come from a wide variety of rich sources, from federal departments and agencies, provincial territorial governments, historical data, current data, indicators, discrete point source information, science results, studies and analyses. And our unique role in the federal government is, support, is to support others in surfacing their open geospatial data to make all of this discoverable. And we do this through open maps. Right now you can find about 5,200 interoperable layers in the open map maps site. There are literally millions of possible explorations to be done with this data from exploring its origins and history through its metadata to layering various social, economic and environmental data sets together to uncover new trends not possible by examining each one on its own. Imagine a product catalog with 5,200 items in its index. It would be very hard to find what you're looking for. So we're changing. In the coming years, so we're launching an exciting new version of our website, one that is public facing, federated to include provincial and territorial data, and maybe someday municipal and academic information as well. In this way, we are continually improving the way Canadians can access open geospatial content from multiple sources. And in this way, we can enable other platforms and systems to to connect to ours, to pull data and information they need for their own business requirements. It's a continual transformation. We're fully embracing the, the many tools the cloud has to offer, and we're looking for new ways to partner with both the private and public organizations. And of course, continuing to drive Canada's open government objectives. Of course, all of this comes with some challenges. The data we're interested in helping open it to the public is distributed across organizations and across jurisdictions. Some of it is licensed and therefore not ready to be made publicly available for free or without conditions. Data and products produced are not always current for a wide variety of reasons. Some data is decades old and does not have an update cycle which satisfies all users. Some is not harmonized across just jurisdictions, so it's not seamless across the country. Some data is still tucked away inside organizations, but at the end, getting it right takes investment and collaboration and time. But we always like to see the sunny side of things, and so we see opportunities as well. Canada really does have many of the good, solid building blocks in place. We have the means to just get data out there. Sometimes it's better to get it into citizens' hands rather than try to make it perfect for every possible use. And at the same time, we know, particularly in the geospatial world, that standards exist and we need to leverage them. Um, we practice keeping data closest to the source and we're adopting a federated system. We can drive open government culture. We have shown that we can do that. And we can apply the fair principles for scientific data management that can also apply to us. Findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of digital assets. And I'd like to turn this presentation over to my colleague, Mr. Nicolas Garripi to bring your attention to a project that is near and dear to our hearts and making data from multiple jurisdictions more easily discoverable through platform technology. Alors Nicolas, over to you. This project goes back to 2017 when the Canadian Council on Geomatics agreed to include PNT geospatial metadata and services in the federal geospatial platform. In 2018, an environmental scale was done to look at PNT portal status, the inventory of data set and services, the technology use, the readiness of the FGP, and also to the legal and licensing terms. In 2019, BC data was piloted successfully. Since then, the FGP is integrating the PNT geospatial platform in our system, and we plan to complete the integration by March 2023. Now let's look at the 
project parameters. It's all about metadata. The data stays where it is. We are only working with metadata. To be integrated in our system, the record should be distributed under an open license, and this license should be compatible with the Canadian Open Government License. Also, the metadata are distributed under the original license. We're also working with an automated process with weekly updates, and given the fact that Canada has two official language, we are using artificial intelligence process to translate metadata to support both official languages. Without being too technical, here is an architecture showing metadata workflow. On the left side of the diagram, there is the provincial and territorial portals. Connected to this, we have the ETL tool, which transforms the PT metadata to several metadata models. From there, metadata for geospatial content will be created in the HNAP ISO 19115 standard and will be onboarded in the FGP, which is the internal federal portal for geospatial data. After that, geospatial data will be transferred into public facing portal, which are the open science and data platform for cumulative effects and the open map collection of the open government. Regarding the non-geospatial data set, they will be transformed in the CCAN Canadian extension metadata model and will, be, will go directly in the open government portal, but for the federated data collection. Now let's go deeper in our ETL process. To be able to synchronize the PT dataset with our federal platform, we need first of all to connect to the PT portal and read the dataset. There are several technologies for this. For now, we had to deal with CCAN, DCAN, and Secreta API to read the dataset. Once we have read the metadata, we are able to start transforming it. The first thing to do it's transform the metadata in a working model and filter them to only keep records with the appropriate license. After that, we can separate the geospatial and the non-geospatial content and convert it to the destination model. Next steps are to perform a change detection process to identify new, updated, deleted, and non-change record and translate only the new and updated record to be able to uh, upload the destination portal. On the technology side, all of this is developed using the FME server from the Canadian company CEF software. And to host our server, we are using an AWS cloud infrastructure. And also this infrastructure is providing us the automated translation process to translate English to French and French to English metadata. Now let's look at some issues that we had to overcome during the project. Given the fact that we are working with metadata, all the issues were related to the metadata model. When the province is using a metadata model compliant with standard, it's easy for us to translate it into our destination model. But at the opposite, when it's not compliant, it's really hard for us. As an example, we had to deal with some semi-bilingual metadata distributed under your unilingual metadata model. Also, we had to deal with non-plain text metadata distributed using a plain text application. And finally, we had to deal with special exams that were distributed using troponin instead of coordinates. If you want to access the PNT dataset, you can do it by going to two different portals from the Government of Canada. If you're more interested in geospatial data with an orientation for cumulative effects project, you can do it by going on the Open Science and Data platform. If you go there, you will notice that we have more than 3,000 records available in French and English. If you are interested to look at all the data set, geospatial or non-geospatial, you can go directly to the Open Canada portal. If you go there, you will notice that we have more than 5,000 records available also in both official languages. To conclude, here is the project calendar. You will notice that all of this will be done by next fiscal year. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any question regarding the project, please contact us at those following emails. Thank you.